Dekumon here, and welcome to Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail. That's right. Uh, it's It's been teasing me. It's been taunting me. Uh, for those that don't know, I have been on vacation for the past week. Family picks the best time to plan these yearly get-togethers. It's always around the 4th, and unfortunately around the 4th this time meant Dawn Trail launch week. Literally the day of early access was the last day I had before I had to leave for the trip. So I haven't had a chance to get into the main story at all until today, and oh goodness, it has been, it has been a thing. But there is an upside, and the upside is I was able to take my laptop with me and level both Viper and Pictomancer 290, so both are ready to go. As for which one I'm playing, well, I've already said it's gonna be the Bob Ross Mage. It looks insane. It feels insane. It has been a blast to play. The, honestly, both classes have been a blast to play. Oh, but before we get into Dawn Trail proper, we have a video to watch! The Dawn Trail demo. Oof, I love this song. This song slaps so hard. Uh. I am so interested to see how this story is going to play out, because I mean, oh. I'm sorry, Alphano, I didn't mean to talk over you. I dare say our destination will soon be in sight. Enjoying yourself for a change? <laughs> and yes, I know the Warrior of Light's main class in this one is Viper, but we're gonna say Viper for post-game. We're gonna do Pictomancer for main story. to see how this looks on my screen properly. Because, uh, yeah, I've been playing on a laptop for the past week, so I haven't gotten to see this look properly on my actual screen. It's probably not going to look as good, unfortunately, on YouTube. It never does. <laughs> Asinian Moonlighting is a freaking monster hunter here. Oh, man, we're going to get wilds next year, too. That's going to be fun. And I was wrong when I first saw this. This is not the same two-headed Mabul drop we see in Wonder's Palace. It is a different one. Because that guy dies to the Tonberries. And here's the big Viper reveal. I might actually spend an episode just explain what Viper plays like right now, because it is a bonkers class. <laughs> that squirrel better be a minion. That's all I gotta say, that squirrel better be a minion. Might you have a moment to speak further? Actually, I think that is already a minion. I'm not sure. My minion collection isn't quite up to snuff, so... And look at that Viper go! Yeah, this, this class is bonkers fast. It, it, it's almost like Monk in terms of how bonkers this class can get. Although, surprisingly, it didn't play the way I expected it to. I really thought it was going to be a stance dancer bouncing between the two. But it's basically just abilities that trigger which mode you're in. Graha and his big old taco. <laughs> uh, and here's Kryle showing off the Pictomancer. And I 
think that's actually the limit break right there uh, for Pictomancer. Their LB3 is that big blob critter. Which, I understand it, but I kind of was really hoping they would just paint a meteor. <laughs> Or if this was like a fighting game, it would just zoom out and you'd just see Bob Ross himself just painting the fighting scenes. Like, and here you have this lovely scene where the enemies are all about to get utterly thrashed. And just zooms back in and they're all dead. Look, my friends. Behold the scene of our next great adventure. You and your adventures. I trust you have not forgotten the true purpose of our voyage. Oh, you mean her? Last, come to the land you call the new world. Apparently, she has become a fan favorite, and I can't wait to see why. <sighs> Summer vacation with the Scions, my friend. I mean, honestly, our last expansion, we literally saved not just the planet, but all existence, like all life across the universe. Where the hell are we gonna go from here? I'm very curious to find out. And here we are, finally in the game. Q times, they're much better than they were on the first couple days. Still not super great. Anyway, Hello, Pictomancer! Yep, uh, this is me and my lovely 90 gear and my lovely 90 tombstone weapon, which uh, honestly looks pretty good. I love the the paint thing, looks like it's straight out of Alligan. It's just so bonkers. Anyway, uh, before we get to the main story, I wanted to go over how Pictomancer plays first because this class is busy. And it is kind of a bonkers thing. So we're gonna start with the right side over here because I basically have this divided into two sections. We have the paints and we have the motifs over here so let's go with the paints pretty simple uh fire red and fire tune red are the basic bread and butters and this is actually a three-part combo here and you'll see as they go through this they change to arrow and green and water and blue and it is this lovely little three-part combo and i love the fact that it is red green blue uh <laughs> it's kind of the programmer in me but yes, I go through these. This is, this is actually this is actually like the weakest thing you can be doing. So it's just kind of filler. And the Fire 2 is the AoE version. And you'll see, every time I go through one of these combos, I'm getting something. I'm getting 25 gauge, and I'm also getting one of those little pips. Now those pips I can spend on Holy and White, which is instant cast, which is not bad. And that gauge I can spend on Subtractive Palette. This turns off red, green, and blue, and instead turns on Cyan, Ma Cyan, Yellow, and Magenta, which are slower, but they hit so much harder. And also, uh, hitting that also changed one of my whites into a black. Which again, hits much harder. Now, uh, the last thing on here is Smudge, and Smudge is literally just Paint Slide! And Paint Slide is awesome. As for the other side, well this has to do with those three easels that are up there. These are the motifs! And as you can see, they take a fair bit of time to cast. But, if I not in combat, boom, instant cast. Now what do these do? Well, they turn on the Mew skills that are directly beside them. So creature motif will turn on the creature Mews, which in this case became Palm Mews. And if I cast it again, which I'm using instant cast because I don't want to go through that, it becomes Winged Mews. And after two creature muses, I can cast Mog of the Aegis, which is just this big old laser beam. Uh, the hammer motif basically gives me a big old hammer, and I get three GCDs of this, and this thing, this thing is a monster, because these are always direct crits. They hit like a freaking Mack truck on wheels. It's beyond bonkers. The last one, the last one's a buff. This is a party buff, and it gives me a mini ley lines for five casts of the color spells, and only the color spells. It also gives me a free use of subtractive palette, so I have to make sure I'm using this as much as possible. Also, uh, don't cast black or white when you're on this ley line thing, because it will eat up those five casts. So you do not want to do that. I've learned that the hard way. I have wasted charges of this. Uh, beyond that, I only have three other abilities. I have Tempora Coat which is a shield for me. And I have two abilities which I don't know yet. And that's it. That is Pictomancer in a nutshell. 
Uh, I'll go over Viper next episode, just so we're not doing all of this up front. But Viper's a thing. Viper is a hell of a thing. And speaking of a hell of a thing, where am I going? I'm going back to Charlian. We're gonna get our freaking story on. I love the fact that it's snowing here in Charlian. <laughs> just makes this so much better. Oh, and I've got to remember all the voices for characters, or just make new ones up. It's also fine. And our first main quest, a new world to explore. I have no idea where the story's gonna go with this, and I cannot wait to see how this is gonna play out. Welcome back, Dekamon. I've just had word from Erinville. It seems he's managed to secure passage to Tural aboard a guild ship vessel. Why don't you wait in the main hall while I go and inform your travel companions? It should only take a moment. All right, there's one other thing I've got to do, and it's a little bit of bookkeeping. It's time to reset the knot counter for a new expansion. All right, I imagine voice right off the bat. I'm also eager to see how the upgraded graphics engine is going to deal with better animations. Because I know that's one of the main reasons they did this, was to give us better animations. You know, make the characters more emotive. Really? Not voiced? Man, that surprises me. Okiji gave us the good news. We've made ready to set sail at a moment's notice. The only one yet to arrive is Ellenvel himself. Hmm. Ah, that's him right there, I sure. Ah. And Wook too. Ah, you're all here. It took some persuasion, but the Gleaner's Guildship has granted us passage aboard a vessel bound for Tural. There'll be other passengers, researchers and artisans and the like, so we'll need to share deck space. Oh, that's fine, Erinvel. I don't anyone expected we'd have a ship all to ourselves. They're not casting off just yet, so if you have any lingering concerns, now is the time to voice them. Hmm? I wouldn't call it a concern, but everyone's still clear on what we'll be doing in Tural, yes? We've not forgotten, but for the sake of everyone who's watching this and, you know, hasn't played since Endwalker, maybe we should go over it again. The nation of Tuliali is in the midst of deciding its next ruler. As your chosen allies, we shall assist you during the Rite of Succession and support your bid to become Dawn Servant. In addition to that, Elfino and I have another objective. As part of its reconstruction, Garlemald seeks ways to reconcile and re-engage with its neighbors. By visiting Tural, we hope to learn more about how its myriad cultures interact with one another, how they find common ground, develop stronger ties, the sort of insights that might help our friends in Ilsebad. Well, the first one is, you know, don't shoot at your damn neighbors! But we'll pursue that goal in our own time. You can be assured that we'll give the contest all due attention. That's all I ask. Otherwise, you're welcome to do as you like. And she's looking for the note, or information the note her grandfather left. You wanted to find out about your grandfather, Red Cry? Mm -hmm. Yes, as far as we can determine from the old missive I found, he has been tasked with investigating the Golden City by your father, the Dawn Servant. Yet, oddly enough, we have no record of that investigation in our archives, and nothing to explain the earring which accompanied the letter. The earring that I'm wearing right now, by the way. Thus, for reasons both official and personal, I should very much like to get to the bottom of this mystery. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be a chance to speak with Papa. You can get your answers right from the source. I look forward to meeting him. In any case, you're not the only one with an interest in the City of Gold. The Golden City is a children's bedtime story. I am part of this expedition only because the Third Promise has commanded that I serve as guide. Aw, Arendelle's pouty. Why are you pouty, man? Still playing the part of the stoic servant, I see. What of you? Don't you dare tell me you've changed your mind. Not one bit. Hoist sail and let the wind take us as she pleases. We won't make you dawn servant by standing here and talking about it. A go with her adventures to be found. Come on, let's get going. <laughs> A man of action! Right then, if they're all still committed to the journey, then I say we make ready to depart. Oh yeah. And our first nod! The first of I imagine many. 
I imagine just like all the other expansions, this first few episodes are gonna be kind of slow. Just a lot of walkie and talkie time, but that's okay. We can deal with walkie talkie time. Eager as they are, the others have already left for the harbor. We're not in danger of missing the boarding call, but perhaps we should be on our way as well. We probably should. I just realized I'm gonna have to make myself a new blocker. The, the chat blocker I'm talking about. I have a new one for every expansion, so Dontrell's gonna have theirs here soon. This is 100% voice. Savoring the moment? I can feel your excitement, your eagerness to explore the unknown. Well, for once, the fate of the world doesn't rest on our shoulders. We might even get a chance to enjoy ourselves. Oh, God dang it, I'll say, why did you have to say that? <laughs> uh, I get this expansion is supposed to start off like the next big story arc. But man, I'll say, did you have to jinx it like that? <laughs> Do not be so quick to relax. Oh, Tural may seem but a short sail away on a map. The vast seas between brim with peril. The treacherous waters of Shade's Triangle alone have claimed countless vessels. Hey, we only gotta make the journey once, then get me to an ether right. I'll never have Even to do it following again. the safe route plotted by Admiral Bufiswin herself, this will be no pleasure cruise. Perhaps, but my voyage here was uneventful enough, disappointing me so. Either way, the two of you have first-hand experience, <laughs> which will be of great comfort in the days ahead, I'm sure. Hey. Aye, it's nothing new to us. What was that look about? All aboard! We're casting off! That's our cue! It's time. I trust you have everything you need? Oh yeah. Got my fancy new paintbrush. Nice little mini nod. And we're off and ready to race. Man, I can't wait to hear some new soaking tunes. Oh, I've been waiting. Like, the music and like Endwalker's music slaps so hard. Oh, dude, Scream is still one of my favorites. I can't wait to hear what and we get so in this one. Does our ship cast off from the docks. Oh, Arendelle's gonna be our narrator. We sail west, as Katendram did some 80 years past, bound for the new world, known to her children as the continent of Toral. I still hope we get to go to Maricidia one day. That's the one continent I'm really interested in. Uh, whoop. Just wait, Papa. When this contest is said and done, it'll be your daughter who sits the throne. Me! Walk la mat! <laughs> I was gonna say, you, uh... You want to give us a king of the world, or queen of the world in this case? Damn, I look good in this new graphics engine. I think that- really? No title card? That would have been like the perfect cue for a title card right there. Go west, young scions. Find South America, or I guess it's equivalent, because we've been basically playing on Africa's equivalent this whole time. Ooh, music changed. <laughs> Alpha knows in the books, and the girls are watching the horizon. We'll see some dolphins. Smooth sailing so far. Aye, so far so good. But this sea, she's a fickle one. Calm one moment, blowing a gale the next. Hmm. Interesting. I'll take my rest while I can then. Damn, Aaronville giving us the side eye there.
We left port what seems an age ago now, and we've seen naught but open water ahead. I knew Tural was far, but it's another thing to really know. Yeah, I'm gonna say, I think the only other super long sailing journey you guys have had to deal with was when we went to Kugane for the first time, and that was a long swim too. Even then, you kind of had, uh, had shoreline to look at. Speaking of which, some of our fellow passengers have made this trip before. Several times, in fact. Oh! I was able to learn a few things about Tuliolal and the right of succession. Well, don't keep us in suspense, Cryo. Lay it on us. Since we still have a long way to go, why not have a chat with them yourself? Oh. I'm sure you have questions of your own. Ugh, fine. <laughs> I suppose we can chat up the locals. Some things never change, eh, Kryl? Oh, did you look out across these same waters, Grandfather? Maybe. Maybe not. So am I gonna get my title card here? Really? Still no? Well, all right then. Let's go around and chat with five different shipmates. You actually have a name, sir. Hmm. Oh, this will be my first visit to Turol. Fonte Janine's the name. I was working at S-Times Aesthetics in Uldar, you see. But my employment with them, uh, came to an end. Rather nasty accident with a shaver and all that. That's why I visited Charlie in, in the hopes of starting over. While I was attempting and failing to find a new job, I seized the chance to board this vessel when I overheard room for another passenger suddenly opened up. I'm told the Dawn Seventh welcomes all regardless of origin, and so Tuliai seems like the perfect place to start anew. <sighs> Hopefully things will be better this time. My oh man, you gotta be careful at inventing new haircuts, that's your problem. I see you in Eosia before, you great and famous hero. Gah, I've had enough of playing the simpleton. There was a time when we took great pains to maintain the deception, but with more of you Eosias coming to Tural, it's becoming impractical. <laughs> Besides, my mercenary days are over. Too many of our warband have fallen, and so we head home to lick our wounds. I love the fact that this is the, going to be the excuse how these guys no longer talk like simpletons. It's like, it's just been an act this whole time! My story? Well, since you asked, I wanted to retrace the historic journey of the Great Teterum. You know, the first Eorzean to set foot on Tural almost 80 years ago. The Mamorja's leader said to have welcomed Keterim with open arms, and sent him home with a bounty of silverware as a token of their friendship. But the real treasure was the crops he brought back. Popatoes, tomatoes, and corn, which spread across the Eorzea like a wildfire. His grand adventure led to a culinary revolution! The tales say Keterim returned to Tyrol several times after that, but his ship vanished during his last recorded voyage and he was never heard from again. Then even a seasoned adventurer like him could meet such an testimony to this ocean's peril. Curious. Very curious. Wonder if that's gonna come into play. An adventure, I presume. I'm a merchant myself based in Uldar. Specialty imports and exports. Eorzean and Tulali both. If this is your first crossing the salt, as they say, do remember that the social malls of Eorzea are not necessarily the same as those of Ayonda. Consider this. It is not uncommon for the various races to be referred to instead by the names of certain clans. For the Mekote, the Hibsnato. The Hrothgar, the Zvral. Not because every member of a given clan is of the same race mind, but because many individuals of said race are associated with that clan. A fair assumption in certain cases, but take care not to give offense. Hmm. So, kind of like Shadowbringers, we might be calling different races different things here, eh? You want to make a wager? We're taking bets on who'll be sat next in the Dawn Seven's shiny chair. There are four claimants in the right of succession. Your young Wukla Mok being one of them, of course. But from one of them, Mulja Bloke was telling us, the other three are all strong contenders. Not too many keen to risk that coin on the third promise. Hmm. So Little Miss Lamotte is the underdog. Well, we here always appreciate an underdog and strive to make them the top dog at the end of the line. Hmm. Couple little nuggets of information we might have gotten there. Did you learn anything of interest? I think I did actually. A couple of things of interest. Couldn't that about clan names? We should have Oklamat and Erinvel teach us the ones we should know. Actually, it's getting a little chilly up here on deck. Let's all gather in the cabin. Uh oh. 
What was that about storms popping up out of nowhere? Because it looks like one's about to pop up right on top of our head. Oh dear, I hope the twins don't get seasick. Alpha no, most likely. A storm, it seems. <laughs> oh. oh no. She gets seasick? How's your stomach any better? I don't know what you mean. I don't get seasick. <laughs> Lady, I can see the green poking through your fur. I'm just feeling a little nauseous is all. Isn't that what seasickness is? You know, in here I thought Alphano would be the one blowing chunks. Erinville, you were born in Tyral, yes? Do many Vieira live there? The Chetona, as my people are called, have settlements mainly in the north, in Shaktural. Hmm. And your family? I know nothing of my father, not even his name. Wait, really? Damn, how young were you when you left? As for my mother... <gasps> uh... Holy crap. Oh dear. I think we should go up top. We Come, we should lend what aid we can. Uh yeah, definitely. Man, that went out of control fast. I have not seen the ocean rage with such fury before or since. Holy crap, did we freaking sail into a hurricane? The heaving waves tossed our ship about like a toy. Sending sailors tumbling and stumbling. The dauntless Alize, quick to the rescue, was almost lost to the sea herself. <laughs> I think there was an odd just there. Meanwhile, our champion rushed to deploy the vessel's magical defenses and thereby shield us from the lightning. It was a wild look there. Oh, hey! I wonder if we pick this trick up from Leviathan. What an extraordinary life he must lead to be able to operate such a device with practiced ease. <laughs> so I'm kind of enjoying the little sepia screenshots we're getting. Wuklama, too, threw herself into the rescue efforts. Though, one might have mistaken her for another soul in distress. Wow, Erdo, I really thought you were going to get a perfect shot of her just heaving onto the deck. I really was. That would have been perfect, although I suppose... That's something we save for the Manderville questline. By the time the unruly seas had calmed, our strength was all but spent. And we had yet to even glimpse the shores of Tural. And yes, there will be more Manderville. Though I imagine he will not be the uh, the relic quest line again. In I... retrospect, of course, that battle against the storm would prove a fitting prelude to the coming contest for the throne. Oh. Ah, storm looks like it's finally broken. I see daylight. What, did I just sleep here all night? I mean, I get we want to show off the fancy new lighting engine, but still. Lanto? ding a -ling. Either they've sighted land or uh, it's dinner time. 
and I'm not seeing anyone sitting here in the mess. So I suspect land. Come on, let me see that beautiful new continent. I guess not, not yet. Morning. Joining us for some fresh air? <laughs> Seems my belly has settled along with the weather, but I'll feel much better once we're on solid ground. Agreed. I, uh, I don't handle being on a boat well Ugh. myself. Can't be much farther now, can it? And this is where we find out the that storm just blew us back a week's worth. Seabirds. Land must be near. You need only hold out a while longer. Ah, yep, true. True, very true. For a dark moment, I thought the ocean might swallow us. Glad to have my pessimism proven wrong. In other good news, I examined the sailor who took a fall, and he's faring well. I'm sure he'll make a full recovery. Nice. Good news indeed. If all's well, then we needn't delay in launching the landing boat. Still need to see land first. Ships have to lower anchors some way from shore. Too close, and they risk having their underbellies ripped open by the reefs that crowd Toliolan's coasts. Come. Ah. Fair enough. <laughs> I am definitely liking the more subtle animations, though. This is going to make finding nods when we're zoomed out a little bit. Tougher. Eh. No one ever said this job would be easy. Thanks for bringing us all this way. Ha! We only did what we were paid to do. Couldn't hardly set you adrift halfway. <laughs> if anything, it should be us thanking you for helping us through that beast of a storm. Yeah, I hope you don't see another one because uh, we're not coming back. As a matter of fact, everyone's starting to fancy your chances in the contest. <laughs> At this rate, we won't be able to lay wagers no more. Oh dear. <laughs> then I better not let you down. I'm gonna be responsible for them losing that entire ship because they bet it all, aren't I? Oh, oh, there it was. Easy stomach. Easy. Bit of a delayed reaction. We're the last to board. If there's nothing left to say, then let's show off, shall we? Agreed. There we are. Ah, recreating the opening shot of the trailer, I see. Sorry if we see Square Enix in the reef. Nope. Blue seas, clear skies, and boundless possibilities. I dare say our destination will soon be in sight. Oh, so we were in the skiff when we did this shot, not the proper boat. That makes more sense. Enjoying yourself for a change? Ah, oh, I definitely look like I'm enjoying myself. Oh, oh, <laughs> the little smirk. Yeah, look at my friends. Behold the scene of our next great adventure. Oh! At last, we have come to the land you call the New World. To my home, Tural. She took off the headpiece. There we go. All right, can I finally have a title card? Only, you know, 40 odd minutes for me. You guys probably a lot shorter at this point. Woo. Ooh. Ooh, listen to that. 
To the Aloe! Yachtarol. I get to start in the Hub City again, just like what we did with Charlan. Kinda got a little jazz going on here. <laughs> Poor Book, still dealing with that seasickness. Oh, look at the outfits! Oh, that etherite is cool looking. Huh? Vanu? There are Vanu here? Huh. I wonder if this is the original home of the Vanu and the ones we saw in the Cloud Sea were imports. My goodness. Well, a new hub city means a lot Gods. of new etherites. I've seen cities with an impressive mix of cultures, but this is something else. Is that a... No. I've never seen Varnu feathers in that color before. Huh. They even called Don't it out. Don't find much here you never knew existed. There may be a sea route now, but visitors to Tulihyola are still few and far between. And, as we don't build seafaring ships, only a handful of Turali ever venture abroad. Hmm. If you don't build seafaring ships, how do you guys get there? Huh? Travel on the Orzeans? Mamulja sells swords mostly. Those willing to play the fool sail with Lominsan merchants to secure employment in Eorzea. Ah. Uh. I suppose that makes us a rare sight in your country. Rare and currently undocumented. Were there some forms we should fill out or? My goodness, Kyle, this isn't Charlie with the bureaucracy. I think we're gonna be all right. Forms? Did you forget who you're traveling with? Oh my goodness. Uh, who are those guys? Whoa. You are outsiders? Visitors to Tural? Sabral Landsguard. It's a very interesting look for Harothgar. We are. Our nation is soon to hold a right of succession to choose its next dawn servant. That's why we're here. We will not abide interference from foreign agents seeking to foment trouble. What brings you to Tuli Yolal? Jeez. And somebody's hostile right off the bat. Uh, Wook, you want to smooth this over? I can answer that. These fine people are allies in my succession bid. Third, third promise. If you vouch for them, then all is well. Of course. <laughs> Please, accept our apologies. <laughs> no need to bow and scrape. That our soldiers are so diligent in their duties fills me with pride. We'll be continuing our patrol then. Good on you, sir. I like that sword and shield. Well, well. You really are a figure of authority here. <laughs> I hear a little doubting Thomas in there, Alice. Eh? Are you suggesting I don't look the part? <laughs> anyway, first things first. I bid you welcome to Tuli Hyolal. It is a sight. And I'm gonna have to do a lot of wandering. Get all my etherites. Also nice to walk into a new place and not just get accosted by the Echo or some other otherworldly thing. And here we are, we finally made it. And there's everybody, finally. Well, despite the storm's efforts to the contrary, here we are, safe and sound. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there's our end jingle for Dawn Trail. You have arrived in Tuli Yolal. You can return to the city anytime by speaking with the swarthy sailor in Scarlet's Harbor in Old Charlian. Or just, you know, get the ether right, like a sane person. Seriously. 
The Nation of Tulio. A 645 weapon coffer. I'm pretty sure I'm stronger than that, but thanks anyway. Right then, first things first. Hmm? Hi. Ooh. Still a bit queasy. No more boats for a while, please. <laughs> Maybe we'll have Arendelle show us around then. I realize we've just arrived, but we should get you familiar with the city before the right of succession begins. No arguments here. I should very much like to explore. Copy that. Sinel, so I'll guide you. As soon as my stomach stops rolling. Are you sure you're in any condition to do so? Aha! We were wondering who these strange folk were. So the Thud Promise has found herself some new followers then. Followers? Oh, come on. Are you unwell? No, no. Not at all. Could it be better? The Thud Promise does not get seasick. No, sir. As my handpicked entourage here, I've recruited them to help me win the right of succession. I was about to show them around the city, in fact. That sounds lovely. But a group of foreigners is going to attract attention, especially if they are in the company of the Third Promise. Everyone will be curious. We certainly were. Hmm? Your siblings have a tendency to uh, command a respectful distance. But you, you're just so easy to approach. And I enjoy it so much when you do. Please, don't ever worry that you are a bother to me. You're very kind. Good day to you, Third Promise. Uh, if I remember correctly, Third Promise basically meant, like, third in line. They did have a point. Wuklamat is technically royalty here. Like it or not, a person of her station surrounded by this many outsiders is bound to draw a crowd. Wait, what do you mean, technically? I suggest we move in two groups so as to attract less attention. Just technically ignoring me then. Hm. Say come on, you and Kyle can come with me. I'll take the twins then. Look at in touch once we've had a good look around. That voyage was hard on all of us, so take it slow and recuperate. We have time enough for that. Mm-hmm. Enjoy your wanderings. I'm sure we'll have plenty of them. Crow, why are you looking so... Perhaps we should wait a bit. At least until Wuklamat's nausea subsides. And no need for that. Look, I'm ready to go. Uh, oh dear. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe I should go wandering on my own for a bit. Uh, how about that, Wook? Hmm? I'm fine now, really. Can't stand out all day feeling sorry for myself, what with the constant looming and all. Now then, seeing as we're already here, I might as well tell you about the harbor. Annabelle already mentioned the reefs in our coastal. Yeah. Annabelle already mentioned the reefs in our coastal waters, which explains why you don't see any big ships moored at the docks. Uh, only vessels with shallow drafts can navigate the bay. Mostly small fishing boats or barges ferrying cargo up and down the rivers from inland settlements. Much of the incoming traffic is from York Toral, the southern landmass. The clans there produce various goods for export. Their wares are unloaded here and carted off to the merchant stalls and the neighboring markets. Speaking of which, Bayside Bevy should be our next stop. We'll come out and cry and I'll accompany you. Oh yes, and then as always, they always tell you how to deal with these, even though for some reason you... Okay, I know why. It's because you people, because people can actually skip these. Well, as for me, we're gonna wander around town and hit up as many ether currents and etherites as I can. Well, no ether currents, obviously. Oh my! Is the trading post just right here. The trading post is indeed just right here, and everybody's here. This is Bayside Bevy, Tulio World's largest marketplace. Being right on the harbor, everything from fresh fish to imported wares go directly to the shelves. Anything you want, they most likely have here. Mm-hmm. All right, I should mention that here in Tuyol, we buy things with Pell, a currency that the Pell created. But don't worry, more and more trade is coming in from Eosia, so more shops are happy to accept your gill. Just expect a substantial markup. There's also Wakumakeli, another market to the east of here, but that can wait for another time. 
I have other places I want to show you first. Next, we'll head back a bit, then northwards up the stairs to a certain plaza. Hey, I can't wait to show the look on your faces. Damn, that etherite is bright up close. What do you think of that, eh? It's a big old etherite. Goodness me, you have etherites in Tuliwal? I think I told you before, but my brother Connor spent three years studying in Sharian. He fell in love with the nation and its ways, and brought back to us the knowledge of etherite construction. Papa warmed to the idea at once. Had one built immediately. Hmm. Did you do the attuning thing? If you're ready to continue, we'll head down again and then up the slope to the side. Right at the top is the gate which leads to Zakturala. Let's make a stop at Great Room Post on the way though. That's the headquarters for the Landsguard. Hmm. Well, I have yet to do the attuning thing. So that is definitely what we're going to do first. Follow it swiftly by setting this as my current home point. As is tradition at this point. Big old talking point here. Oh, I can talk to both of them. What do we got here? We have a lot of narrow winding streets that crawl up the sides of the mountain. As you can see, though, the builders make sure the city's main thoroughfares were wide enough to accommodate wagons. Uh, very good on them. Now, trudging up and down all these slopes and stairs is exhausting. I understand now where Wuklamat gets her endless endurance. Yeah, if you had to walk up and down these stairs for your, you know, your entire life, you'd probably be pretty strong in the lungs, too. Alright, finally made it to Brick Bloom Post. Woo! Long walk. Here we are, Brick Bloom Post. The soldier stationed here are responsible for defending Turi Island and preserving the peace. Bleh. <laughs> I mushmouthed that a little bit. The Landsguard are led by our nation's strongest warrior, and so naturally Papa has commanded them since the beginning. At least until three years ago, when Zoralja took over as commander, the title is no empty honor. It means the first promise is considered equal to the dawn servant and martial strength. Oh dear. Meanwhile, I haven't even managed to... Managed to what? Well, I'll discuss my brothers and their accomplishments later. Alphino and Alice should be around to hear too. Come on, it's time I showed you the Skygate. It's right at the northern end of Taranmarch. Skygate? Uh, that's actually not far from here. I imagine this is going to lead to the first of our two new zones, because, you know... I, I, I imagine we're going to follow the similar formula that most of the other expansions have been, which is... Give us a branch to tease two areas that we'll explore properly later. Holy shit, that's a door. Massive, isn't it? And on the other side is an equally massive bridge to match. Both were constructed by a race of giants, the Yokui. Oh. Dude, check out that bridge. That is awesome looking. Is that a suspension bridge? It is, isn't it? Strictly speaking, Tural is actually two separate continents. Yuktural, the southern lands of the mother, and Zaktural, the northern lands of the father, which lie beyond the bridge. Legends say it used to be one great landmass, but long, long ago the two gods fought a titanic battle and when one threw the other to the ground, the impact was so devastating as to split the continent in twain. Huh. Xenoblade Chronicles 1, anyone? A familiar sounding tale. I am put in mind of the conflict between Hydaelyn and Zodiac. But getting back to Zaktoral, those lands are also part of the Turialo nation, correct? That's right. Is my father incredible? He united the people of two continents into a single nation. The many clans of Tural have been at war for generations. It was only when Papa traveled the lands and put a stop to their immediate conflicts that we finally had peace. Hmm. And that's the main reason I want to win the throne, so I can preserve the peace he built. What, you think the others won't? But I see you're more interested in what's behind the gate than hearing about my aspirations. Sorry. Adventure in me. Crossing the bridge to Zaktaral requires a special travel pass. Unfortunately, they won't issue any new permits until the right of succession is over. I promise to get you one when I'm done, servant, but until then, you'll just have to wait. Huh. I'll hold you to that. Then I'll make sure you win. Mark my words. I wish we could go there right now. I'll hold you to that. <laughs> I've never broken my word. Once the throne is mine, that travel permit is yours. Huh. I wonder how quickly we're going to be dealing with this right of succession thing, then. Very curious, very curious indeed. Kryl! We must have covered half the city by now! 
to the Yellow is unlike any other place I've visited. I'm thoroughly enjoying myself. Nice. Very nice. And I still have time to do one more quest. A City of Stairs! We'll head west next, toward the Ark of the Dawn. The dirigible landing is on the way. You have dirigibles too! Twilliarlal is certainly doesn't want to have methods of travel. A wicked by. Now, if you've seen enough of this area, let me know and we'll continue on. I have indeed. The Ark of the Dawn is on the other side of the city, so speak up if you see something that interests you as we walk. Yes, follow, follow along again. As I head down and around and hit basically every other spot I can. Man, it's washed along. Trial, interesting. I'm still struggling to conceive how one could construct an entire city on the side of a mountain. This was originally the site of a Yokui temple. The giants built it when they were first making the bridge to Zaktaral to appease the god who slumbers in the Great Ocean Trench. After the Yokui withdrew, the temple stood empty for centuries. So when Papa was establishing his new nation, he saw a structure he could refurbish into a palace sitting practically in the center of Tural. He gathered his artisans to do the work, and the houses they built for themselves became the foundation of the city you see today. Huh. Speaking of houses, we'll be passing through the resplendent quarter, the biggest residential district in Turial. We climb these sets of stairs here, all the way up. All the way up, you say. Oh dear. <sighs> you huffing yet, Kryle? I'm huffing. Discuss the palace. Oh. Papa's palace is called Voluk Shusna, which roughly translates to Invincible Resilience. Hmm. You probably want to take a closer look, but we'll be coming back here later. Let's move on for now. Ah, okay. Fair enough. The sheer scale of this place is incredible. I wonder what that carving at the top represents. Hmm. Birdies? Not sure at this point. I'm sure we'll find out. It will be one of the big fights we have to do. All right, Kryle. Kryle, come on. So, this is the resplendent quarter. What manner of people live here? Hmm? It's hard to tell with this bright light here. No, oh, we have residents from all the Yoktara clans. Mabulja, Sabral, Pepilepu, Moplin, Hanu Hanu. We also have Tonwawata, Isetro, and Chetona who moves south from the ancestral lands in Zak Tural. In essence, it's a gathering of people from every corner of Tural. A true representation of Turialo's the first character. The adornments on each building contribute to the eclectic cultural aesthetic. It's also beautiful. I'm glad you think so. Come, we continue down the stairs. Hmm. Yeah, it is much better when I'm not having the giant glare spot in the way. Hmm. What do you want to talk about here? The big drum? Oh, that is a big drum. That big drum there is called the Dawn Herald. They play it for formal occasions, like when honoring the land scouts returned from a dangerous duty. Huh. I tried hitting it with my axe once and ripped the skin. And me a proper scolding, let me tell you. I think it was the time Papa had me upside down by the ankle. <laughs> Seriously, you hit it with your axe? I've never seen such an enormous drum! What would even one use to beat such an instrument? Uh, well, I'm guessing Daddy was using Wook Lamott to beat that drum at one point after she tore a stinking hole in the skin. Next pit stop, over by the dirigible landing. And here are our dirigibles. Ah, dirigibles. Not bad, eh? Hmm, not bad indeed. I hear other nations use airships to sail the skies, but you'll only find balloons in Turial. We have them for the exact same reason as the Etherites. Gwanla brought back the plans from Shardian, and Papa thought them fantastic and commissioned their construction. This was around three years ago. Since that time, we've added flights to other settlements. Trade with Frontiers communities has never been easier. Ah, but that's enough about the eligibles. The Ark of the Dawn awaits. Ark of the Dawn? Well, forgive me a minute, ma'am. I need to grab an Etherite first. This one at least is open. This is it, the Ark of the Dawn. When the giants were still here, it was known as the Yokturar Land Gate. But when Papa founded Turual, everyone began using its present name in honor of the great achievement. Though this gate is Kosomakwa, the wetlands south of the city, depending on what the right of succession asks of us, we might end up going in that direction. Kosomakwa, the name alone is intriguing. Speaking of which, what 
at those fluffy animals we passed earlier? Fluffy animals? <gasps> alpacas! Oh, I love me alpacas. They're adorable. Ah, those are alpacas. Fearsome, four-legged fiends. <laughs> Fearsome. Fearsome? They seem quite placid to me. Wook, did you have a bad experience with an alpaca as a child? You'll learn soon enough, Kyle. You'll learn soon enough. I know that, but they actually are vicious and they're just calm right now. Ah, but forget the alpacas. I have something far more important to show you. Come along. Yeah, she definitely had a bad experience with an alpaca as a kid. That's all that was. One of them spit in her face, didn't it? Here we are. If you wish to learn the history of Tulioal, then look no further. At what? These stone pillars, you mean? Oh. Ooh. They all look the same to me. I suspect we'll get a better look at them another time, for that is it today. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a like and favorite, and subscribe to join me for more Aeosian adventures, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Damn, it's good to be back.